it's Fallout week, and that means I'm about to be an absolute lunatic for, I'd say, a week and change. I apologize to absolutely nobody. You realize how long we've been waiting for something new in the Fallout franchise? I'm sorry, Elder Scrolls fans, but look, Fallout TV show on the horizon, season one about to drop this week, obviously as the next major installment in the Fallout franchise, it may not be a game, but it does take place a little bit further in the timeline beyond Fallout 4, so I have to wonder, what's this gonna have to do with the games? How are they resetting the lore on the West Coast, if at all? What's going on in this TV show? But also, what's going on with games? Today, we're talking about Fallout 4's next-gen update. Look, there have been so many predictions I've made around this next-gen update that I thought were complete slam dunks, super calm. Confident. I even had a contingency plan where I went, yeah, maybe they'll do it for the Great War date. You know, a nice place to drop a Fallout update with a couple little bells and whistles and lead into the Fallout TV show. And then when that didn't happen, I went, oh, of course they're going to launch it with the Fallout TV show. Now, I wouldn't be surprised in typical Maddie fashion if, as I talk about this topic within the next 24 hours, Bethesda goes, and here's your update on the Fallout 4 Next Gen update. But that's exactly what we're talking about today. As I thought, you know what? The TV show's right around the corner. Of course they're going to wait for that and maximize the player count but are they is it actually going to arrive after the tv show sometime later in 2024 actually i'm starting to think more and more that may be the case but i want to shout out my boy my very close friend lone vault wanderer johnny roses excellent dude made a video called what is going on with the fallout 4 next gen update he brings a couple of new pieces of evidence to the forefront that i personally wasn't aware of it's a great conversation i'll have his video linked down below please go support the homie but he was the reason i was making this video at all because he called attention to a couple of few things and had a few strains of thought that i have to give credit to because i just did not consider them at all so ladies and gentlemen if you're new here and you're into fallout news information reviews freakouts, whatever they may be, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing. So we need to do a history lesson at this point. Why is that? Because Bethesda has gone from the company that was most known for announcing things and releasing them in a very short period of time to having the biggest gaps between announcement and release compared to any company in the games industry. Remember when we used to make fun of Ubisoft for announcing things a year or two in advance? Well, now you have Bethesda Game Studios announcing a Fallout 4 Next Gen update over a year in advance and we still have no idea almost a quarter away into 2024 where this thing is it was announced on the great war date october 23rd in 2022 here's what they said in the announcement post prepare for the future a next gen update is coming to fallout 4 coming in 2023 this free update will be available for xbox series x and s playstation 5 and windows pc systems including performance mode features for higher frame rates quality features for 4K resolution gameplay, bug fixes, and even bonus Creation Club content. So after that, there was no comment until deep into 2023, Pete Hines had made a snarky remark saying that they were about to launch Starfield, so there's no real focus on the Fallout 4 Next Gen update. And this was one that I missed. He actually did respond to the status of a Fallout 4 update after he had left Bethesda Game Studios and said, I tried to get an update before I had left. Nothing concrete enough that I could share so that was a little bit of an in-betweener update i personally missed meaning that i think pete is a great professional that wouldn't have leaked that information anyway if he knew but him saying i had no idea on the way out is kind of a little bit nerve-wracking now we did get a public update a public acknowledgement of the fallout 4 next gen update when the fallout twitter account posted thank you for your patience with us as we work on the fallout 4 next gen update we know you're excited and so are we but we need a bit more time and look forward to an exciting return to the Commonwealth in 2024. So at that point, we punt it, right? We go, oh, uh, it's going to be when the TV show drops. Well, here we are just a few short days away and still nothing. The other piece of evidence, if you will, was the Fallout Anthology that was announced. They were re-releasing the brand new Mini Nuke, and with it came a copy of Fallout 4, among all the other Fallout games. And I thought, well, when you buy the Anthology, that's kind of the new product to base around the Fallout TV show, and so they're going to lean into that and then put the Next Gen update out around that time. But there was always this little caveat. There was, in fairness, this caveat that we discussed, but we always, I at least did, dismiss going, <laughs> no. One thing we've always said, and I don't mean to turn this into a Fallout 76 slander campaign, I promise you, but I've always said this, that Fallout 76 cannot stand head and shoulders next to a competent Fallout product that's presented in the traditional way, which is single-player, open-world RPG. The second you bring in a new Fallout anything of that ilk, next-gen update, 
new release, spin-off, whatever it may be. It is going to take a massive chunk out of 76's player base. I don't think it's going to outright kill the game. I've learned my lesson at this point in time, thinking that game's going to die a million times over, but it's a cat with nine lives. But when I look at 76, I think a lot of people, myself included, keep going back to it because we love Fallout and we keep trying to either love this game or some people do love this game, but because there's no other Fallout fix regularly, like we had been grown to be used to with Fallout 3 and its DLC, then New Vegas and its DLC, then Fallout 4 a few years later, and then its DLC, and then 76, like we regularly get new fallout games i'm sorry if i sound like a spoiled brat but this is kind of how it should be i think with a prominent franchise hint hint nudge nudge for elder scrolls fans i think that's how it should be done but what i'm getting at enough beating around the bush is that i think if you drop your fallout 4 next gen update next to say fallout 76 and you're trying to drive players into one area instead of the other one's going to siphon the players from one area to another and you're not going to see that growth let's keep it real I think most people who watch my channel are pro Fallout 4 over 76. Just look at the content we post, the audience we have. I don't think there's much arguing that. However, let's talk reasonably here. If you're Bethesda Game Studios, if you're Bethesda, if you're Xbox, if you're a business, and you're taking a look at where do you get the most money out of a Fallout TV show when you don't have a game ready to launch, it's the live service product with all of the monetization systems baked in. Your battle pass, your shop, your subscription service. It's all there and ready to go if you enjoy Fallout 76. And we have more evidence that Lone had discovered that I think suggests a nice push toward Fallout 76. You see here, Prime Gaming posted, A new month is here. Read about the games you can claim this month, Prime members. And you see here, Chivalry 2 and Fallout 76 are the front and center games for this month's Prime Games. In celebration of the upcoming premiere of the Amazon original series Fallout streaming on Prime Video, Prime Gaming will offer Fallout 76 to members on both Xbox and PC when the series premieres on April 11th. We just talked about Fallout 76 last week. Its newest update came out in America's Playground. I found it to be a kind of backbreaking experience where I really wanna like 76, while I know many people don't believe that, I earnestly play that game to try to find a way to love it because I love Fallout so much and I will, I need to find a way, right? Like, because I need my fix. And so I enjoy the franchise enough where I've given it a ton of chances. And this update in particular, I was excited about because it introduced a quote, new open world environment, end quote, which is something I've been asking for 76 since the first year it had come out. Like, this is the obvious right thing to do with this game. It's just give us a ton of new areas to explore. And here we're going back to basically three expedition zones with no real meaningful exploration at all. Like, even when you zip between these zones, you don't have the sewers to explore. Like, it's just these three expedition maps, except with quests within them. So it feels like a complete miss for what 76 should be doing with its game. And naturally with that new update there, you have some of the biggest content drops in all reality for 76 landing at the same time as this TV show. Now you have it on Prime Gaming. 76 is a game that people do support, like it or not. And I think Bethesda would rather you spend your time over there if you're in the Fallout mood rather than creating this next-gen update and putting it out for everybody and saying, hey, here, go away from the thing that's going to make us money. Now, the only thing that puts a monkey wrench in that speculation, as I've said before, is you look at Skyrim, the creations they brought to the forefront there, which is basically Bethesda Game Studios monetization nowadays. And if you do that for Fallout 4, then you've accomplished the same thing, which I don't think necessarily they would run away from. But that's just if they end up doing that, which is something I expect, but maybe not with the next gen update. Maybe things have evolved. Maybe they're going to turn this into a full release. Here's the other caveat. One thing that we had learned, I also have to give credit to Lone because he did mention this video, was that Bethesda Game Studios is around 400 and some odd people. 250 of them are working on Starfield according to a video on Wired from Todd Howard. I imagine some of that staff is working on maintaining 76 even though they brought in double 11. One thing that we also learned recently, which surprise surprise, I did not make a video on because I didn't think it was news, was here for the 30th anniversary of Elder Scrolls. They mentioned here on the right hand side, there paragraph down last but not least yes we are in development on the next chapter the elder scroll 6 even now returning to tamriel and playing early builds has filled us with the same joy excitement and promise of adventure so this means it's playable which can mean a, a lot of things if you're into game development this could mean you have a bunch of white blocks running around a blocked out level this could also mean that they have the terrain built and a couple of quests like it could mean a lot of things i wouldn't run away with this but it does mean that 
there is a transition happening to Elder Scrolls 6. This is happening at the same time as Bethesda trying to commit to Starfield updates in a way that was supposed to be meaningful. I do think they were waiting for the second half of the year where they announced an expansion, presented some meaningful changes to Starfield that address a lot of the concerns for people. But when you look at Starfield, a game that came out, yes, half a year ago at this point in time, this is a game that has got no significant updates since its release. Stability, for sure, but I had a pretty stable experience at Starfield in the first place. Ultimately, it's quiet, almost too quiet, where it could mean that they're just cooking something quietly or that things aren't progressing like we had initially expected, but we'll talk about all of that in a separate video. Nonetheless, Bethesda needs to double down on support for Starfield at the same time, and with all of this up in the air, 76 trying to keep that up and running, for the Fallout TV show, for that influx of players. It's getting consistent updates. Elder Scrolls 6 picking up some level of steam. Starfield needing a substantial amount of content updates. You look at all of that, and it starts to make sense why Fallout 4 could have been put on the shelf for a later time. And what do I think happens at this point? Do you just eventually drop the next-gen update let's say this October, two years later, you also have to think about the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion remaster. What happens there? My guess is that if we're going to take a big left turn on this thing and Bethesda does no shadow drop with the Fallout 4 next gen update, it's that they actually end up selling us something like a Skyrim anniversary edition. Like, hey, we actually turned this from a next gen update for free into something much, much more. And that could be a path that they go down that wouldn't surprise me either. Because if you're Bethesda, you have Skyrim, which you know people will happily repurchase over and over and over again. Guilty as charged. Will they do the same for a Fallout game? And try it for a little $20 update. I'm not encouraging it, but I'm just trying to look at this through the eyes of a bunch of money makers and what I think they would do. And to me, that makes the most business sense is if Fallout 4 isn't ready to go, and you want to make money off of this, then you probably drive into 76 and then sell Fallout 4 and its update again down the line. And we go from there. And that brings about a talking point that's been on my head for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I'll make a video dedicated to this sometime soon talking about Bethesda Game Studios and their size versus their ambition. Make no mistake, no matter what people say and how much people can't stand Bethesda Game Studios and the diminishing quality of their products... They are an ambitious team. You look at their size versus what they're making, and it's clear they're making games that are, in my opinion, too big for their team size. But that's always been their defining DNA. When you look at Morrowind, Oblivion, Fallout 3, this is a sub-100 person team delivering some of the biggest and brightest games in gaming. Even down to Skyrim, they were just pushing past 100 people with this incredible generational game. Now you look at it combined with modern game development woes. You're trying to do a Fallout 4 next-gen update, 76 support, Starfield support, you're trying to do Elder Scrolls 6, you're doing mobile games on the side. I love it because Bethesda Game Studios went from the company that barely did anything to doing a lot. But now it lacks balance, and what that means is you get a situation like this where promises can't be delivered upon. So we do have to contemplate if they are too big for what they really need to be right now, which is if you're going to be a small developer, that's cool. Continue to deliver and develop those small developer experiences, but stop trying to punch way above your weight class because I think in today's developer climate, it's just not as realistic as it once was. We'll see only a few short days until the show releases. I feel like they are missing out on a big moment here for Fallout 4 just to give it some love and, and have that player count just fly through the roof. We'll see what happens after the show launches. Right now, previews are great, something we'll talk about separately, so it seems like we could step out of the show, Jones in for a little Fallout, and again, Bethesda wants to benefit from that, which is where I think the drive towards 76 over a Fallout 4 next-gen update comes from. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you today. Let me know your thoughts on the subject below. Again, check out Lone's video in the link in the description down below if you have yet to. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.